Um, yeah, from my perspective, my film fitted the theme because it's not a perspective that people often think about unless they have OCD, like it's not something that a lot of people would have come into contact with. And I think something as simple as like taking a bush journey, for example, can be so hard for people that struggle with these issues, whereas it's something that a lot of people would never think about. It's just a story that a lot of people may not have considered and a perspective that they might not have either. Um, so I thought I, I interpreted this um, as that because obviously it uses um, the internet and obviously just the way like it's kind of um, connected through like everything and I don't know it's just kind of an issue like when we talk about like stalking and uh, we see like how big an issue that stalking kind of is I thought that's how it's um, uh, connected. Yeah something that I've dealt with not exactly like that but I wanted to take Kind of a different angle on it um, and I know quite a few people who have experienced it as well so I chatted to them and used some of my own experiences as well to make it. So I will be honest I don't think I did a lot of research into like actual sort of um, I guess stalking too much it was just kind of it's mostly just come from like an inspiration for like you know watching films and being into sort of horror. Um, I guess when I'm talking like I guess artistic inspiration I was all inspired a lot by um, uh, sort of found footage of films like Blair Witch, and uh, there's a really good um, YouTube series I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with called uh, Marble Hornets that came out like a, a lot of years ago. That was like a sort of an episodic thing. Um, I just always found stuff like that. I'm um, I always found like found footage like a lot more scarier than like um, sort of traditional sort of horror films just because there's this this there's a bit of a more realistic sort of spin on it when you actually see someone filming it, and so that's kind of why. I kind of the idea kind of um, stemmed from because just that idea of like you know someone filming you and the idea that you know the person who's being like filmed has no idea they're being filmed and that to me just like um, I just thought that idea and I thought it seemed like quite uh, creepy so I made a film of it. I wouldn't say that probably when I was um, researched this or had an idea for it, I can't say that was um, a bit of an inspiration for it. Um, but no, it's definitely something you can look into. I guess like, if we're going to go for that, or I guess one of the things I sort of looked into was sort of celebrity culture. Yeah. And all the way we sort of idolise sort of celebrities. That's sort of, I guess, where the sort of, um, it sort of originated from. It's a little bit more difficult with my film because I made it all on my own. I had to because it was for my A-level. Right, so okay. the only people that were there were just me and the actors. Um, and I kind of did everything. So, um, but yeah, no, the actors were really amazing. I was really glad to have them there. Yeah, we'd had some chats beforehand about the kind of thing I was looking for. But to be honest, um, the other two people in it were just my friends, um, and they agreed to be in it for me. Um, there was a lot of collaboration with my film studies teacher at the time. Like whenever, um, I'm sure you know this, whenever you kind of hit a brick wall and you kind of need someone to jolt you out of it, I'd just go and chat to him about it and hit. Um, say, oh yeah, but what if this happened and it just sent me in another direction, that was really helpful. But yeah, definitely since, because this was for my A-levels, this film, so definitely yeah. since finishing my A-levels, I've learned about um, the collaboration thing a bit more and it's been really nice because it was quite, um, not lonely, but it's, it's, it's weird making a film on your own because it is a collaborative medium and it's meant to have a lot of different people involved and it was just me doing everything and making all the decisions and that's not always good. Well, let's put it like this, if it wasn't for my uh, producer Mark Garrity and the cinematographer and also producer for Tosh, it uh, just wouldn't have been made. Simple. That is as simple as that. Um, so I met them um, in Nottingham, we were sort of uh, networking, and um, I'd already made a film, um, sort of one of a, like, one of a small crew, it was for a university, it was called Escape Go, and uh, we didn't do too well, unfortunately, sort of film festival-wise, but I showed it to them, and uh, uh, they liked it so much, they really wanted to like, uh, make my uh, next film with me. And uh, they've got like a lot of experience, like um, like for Tosh, he's got like um, a really good at, uh, knowledge on cameras. Uh, I mean, she's a DOP, so you kind of expect <laughs> some of that, I guess. But um, yeah, and um, I think it was definitely a collaborative effort because um, normally when I wrote my first, like, um, they helped me a lot with the script as well. Like when I wrote my uh, first script of the um, my previous film, I didn't really do any like kind of editing on it. Uh, but when I wrote like the first draft of the Amazing World of Emma, they kind of uh, looks at it and says, uh, Lawrence, this isn't that good. Um, they put it a bit nice, nice like that, of course, and so we kind of uh, spitballed ideas. Um, 
mostly from the inception of the idea. So yeah, um, it's um, that's how it's all evolved. So yeah, if it wasn't for them, it just wouldn't be the same movie. So yeah, collaboration is important. I think it's um, what I love about making films is when you kind of take things that you've experienced and then you put them in situations that you haven't experienced, and it's like the mesh of those two things. I felt kind of experienced some of what was in the film, but a lot of it was something that I haven't. So that was, it was a bit of what I knew and a bit of what I didn't know, and that was what I really liked about it. Yeah. That's sort of, a, it's sort of a tricky question because I guess like I like to, there's a lot of different themes I kind of like to explore with um, sort of my uh, films. Um, I never normally like to do like the same uh, theme kind of twice. I always like to explore something a bit different. So um, it's normally just, it's either comes down to like, if I, if I think of an interesting idea or there's something like I want to say, um, I guess. I guess that's the uh, way I would answer that. Uh, Hidden was probably my uh, main inspiration for this film. Right. Uh, sort of down to the, um, not just the idea, but also the way I like it's kind of shot as well. Uh, the way I like, um, uh, what I really like about um, Haneke, I never know how to pronounce his name, but what I like about him is that he's, um, it's his sort of subtlety that I, um, I really like, and yeah. uh, that's why I always try to imitate, especially like in horror. Like, um, I'm not a huge fan of like um, jump scares, because I always kind of feel that um, the biggest thing about like jump scares, it's always the anticipation of the jump scare is always scarier than the actual jump scare, and then when it happens, it just kind of like um, ends. Uh, but with like, um, when there's sort of a bit more subtlety involved, I feel like that kind of sticks with you. Mm -hmm. There's a short film, it's, it's the best short film I've ever seen, it's called The Stutterer, um, it's on YouTube and it's just, it's absolutely amazing, it's about um, a guy with a stutter and he's talking to this girl on Facebook and she wants to meet up in real life but he doesn't accept himself for who he is yet so he can't and you see him like face challenges with his stutter and I'm not going to spoil it but it's a really lovely ending um, and I was, yeah, I was really heavily inspired by that, the fact that kind of what what people want and, and what's holding them back from that and what they need to deal with throughout the film to like reach an ending. I also read um, a book called Into the Woods, which is really cool. If you, like, it kind of breaks down how, like almost the story formula, like how stories are made. And you can basically apply them to any film and to kind of see how they're made. So that was really cool um, as well, Into the Woods by Tom York, I think. That, was, that kind of story structure was really inspiring. So um, the if we're gonna get like really specific, the camera we used a uh, it was a I think I think it was a Black Magic um, Ursa Mini. Um, that was mostly something mostly on the technical aspect. Was something my producer and uh, the cinematographer sort of uh, sorted out. So I just shot on this Canon camera that I have. I used a mic that I borrowed from school at the time, and I edited on DaVinci Resolve, which is a really great free software, especially if you're into color grading. That's yeah, it's a really good software to use, and there's a free version, a paid version. The free version's great. Um, so yeah, that was, that was essentially all I did, just my little Canon camera. <laughs> I think I, I, I think I had to call like nine different numbers in the end, like nine different phone numbers, and every person would tell me to call a different phone number, and I was like, I just felt like I was going around um, in circles, but I eventually got someone's email and sent them an email about what I wanted to do, and oh my god, the National Express were amazing, like they sent someone who was with us for the whole day, like just sat on this top deck of the bus, making sure it was all okay. Um, yeah, and it was really great how they could do that. So I just, I think the kind of lesson I learned is you don't ask, you don't get, as long as you do it in obviously a really nice way. Like people, yeah, people are so nice and they'll be really helpful and they'll want to help you. Um, we definitely followed on the campus. Um, so I'm going to cheat a little bit because it was actually my producers that kind of sorted out the uh, locations for a lot of it. Um, how they mostly did it is um, they, because um, the, the uh, cinematographer, like for Tosh, uh, she, um, she used to go to the uh, University of Nottingham, and that's uh, where you saw the lecture hall in the film. Uh, so she had, uh, and so I think that was, um, the lecturer was actually one of her uh, tutors as well, and uh, that's how they, um, they sort of got that location. And um, it was also, there was also a cafe bar that was sort of near there. Um, one of the locations was uh, one of my friends, uh, student accommodation. Uh, we used, um, another friend's house as well. So it's just, um, it was using friends of their connections and sort of everything and um, having two people sort of sort the locations out for you, which is, um, I'd recommend. <laughs>
in a way, it's kind of all free. Mm -hmm. um, I would kind of say that um, it is. It does primarily start off as it's a story I want to tell, and um, a lot of the time, like I guess, like if I find like a sort of social message, it will kind of like it will kind of like go into it. Um, I think there's a. Um, I remember like uh, there's a good profile. Uh, I think it's. I think it's Neil Gaiman. He's. Um, I remember seeing a quote one time that says like the purpose of like a second draft is that you let the audience know that you trick the audience into thinking you knew what you were doing the whole time. So I guess like and I kind of agree with that in a way. So it's um, when you write the first draft, you're kind of writing it, I guess, as a story you kind of like, and then when you rewrite it, you kind of think, oh, this might look quite ill. This might um, I, this might go into this sort of social issue. Um, I guess that that's how it sort of goes into it. Like I normally think of the idea sort of first, and I, I think of I think of it from an artistic standpoint. Then I kind of think, hmm, what kind of message can I sort of um, put into this? And uh, that's how it sort of goes from there. At least for me, that's mm -hmm. my I can only speak from my experience. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to use my own experiences and make people think a little bit because I think I've heard a lot of times the the word OCD kind of thrown about a little bit when people are just, I don't know, a little bit clean or tidy, and they say, oh yeah, I'm being really OCD, and I'm just in my head, I'm like, oh, because um, it's not, people just think that's what it is, and it's so many different things than that, but you have so many different strands of it, it's unbelievable, so I wanted to kind of show people that, and kind of make people think a little bit as well, like if you're on the bus and you see someone having a little bit of a freak out, instead of just being like, what's that? Well, I mean, it's a, yeah, that, I just wanted to kind of show my experiences, and it's been really nice as well that people have kind of watched it and said, like, something that, like, I've had quite a few people who have watched it and said, those are things that I deal with, and it's really nice to see that, and um, the National Express gave me permission to film on the bus, and I, um, I spoke to them about it afterwards, and they're actually, they're going to use it as a training video for all the drivers on hidden disabilities, which is amazing, so just so they know how to deal with things like that. Yeah. Um, this is if they see someone and they can kind of think what might be going on underneath the surface. I always used to write little stories when I was younger and made little videos with my friends and edit them and stuff. And I didn't really realise, like, I had different... I think I wanted to be an engineer till I was, like, 17. Yeah. And then um, I took film studies A-level and I had, like, an amazing um, film teacher. And he just... Because I've always loved watching films and I realised that it's just a really cool way to tell stories and experiences and it's so influential. Like everyone goes home and watches TV at night and watches films and you watch films about like things that you'll never experience or you've never experienced and it just makes you think so much about other people's lives and yeah. I love that. Cool. Um, well, where do you start? Um, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say... Um, well, I think if, uh, if probably the biggest hurdle, at least for making uh, films on that sort of this level, is uh, definitely budget. Uh, that's the uh, big thing because when you make us, um, when you get into like, because um, it's not just a case of like um, booking the equipment, you know, hiring the actors. You'd also have to think of like some logistics, like um, how much food is going to be on the day, how many people you have on set, and um, yeah, I mean that's probably the big hurdle. I guess like uh, aside from that though, I probably I probably wouldn't describe like filmmaking as like one big hurdle, but I'd say like it's a series of like really small light hurdles you need to get over. Like um, there's obviously all kinds of this like how you're going to get to the location, our location planning, um, how you're going to film a scene. For me, it's a little bit my own mind. Like I'm such a perfectionist, and I kind of when I was writing it, I was visualising it in my head, and I just wanted it to be exactly how I imagined it, and it was really hard when you get there and you realise. It's, it's not going to be exactly how you wanted it to be, but you've just got to make it the best you can. And someone, um, one of my friends said to me, it's better better done than perfect. So yeah, it's just, it's really hard to, because yeah, you do want everything to be perfect. And sometimes I've kind of felt like giving up a little bit because I know it's not going to be perfect. And it's really hard to just, even if you know something's not going to turn out how you expected it to be, to keep going anyway and then salvage what you can in the edit. <laughs> I guess, um, I guess from a personal standpoint, um, I like to, I like sort of working on top of the shot just because, like, um, because I'm a bit of an introvert, so it means I don't really have to work with like um, another person, which can be a bit nerve wracking. But now, like, working with actors is obviously a joy, and obviously, as we're talking about collaboration, like, it is a collaborative effort. Like, obviously, I like, 
like obviously when you're writing a script, you're not kind of you're not directing like as you're writing the script, but you're kind of figuring it out with the actors, like how they want to perform it, how I want them to perform it, blah blah blah. So that aspect is very. It feels like I'm gonna sound really pretentious, but it feels a bit more alive when you're like directing a um, an actor. Um, I used to do drama, so I kind of just sat there and acted out how I wanted it, because um, I knew, like, when I wrote the script, I was visualising like exactly how I wanted it in my head and what I wanted the actor to do. Um, it's a bit more nervous, nerve wracking. I say <laughs> so that's um, the key thing. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's um, yeah, it's it's nice to see like sort of the reaction of like audience sort of first hand. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I guess go to go to things like this and watch people's films because it's always nice to to know that people have seen your film and to hear what they think about it. I get asked that quite a bit. Um, so um, at the moment, I'm uh, trying to think of like some short film um, ideas with uh, my uh, with Mark and Batar, so I want to make another film. Um, other than that, I'm trying to like write a novel. At the moment, um, I, I say trying to write over. I haven't like touched in like two months or something like that. So it's just um, I'm not quite ready to share like um, details about the story. Like obviously, it's still a lot of it's like in my head. But um, yeah, it's that, and um, hopefully try and make another film. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little bit because I finished A levels, which I made this film for, and then I kind of went into work and didn't focus on making short films as much, but I think over the past few months I've been trying to find the balance back between like working and making short films. And I've got a few ideas I'm working on at the moment, but I want to go a little bit bigger this time. Uh, just do it. That's all I can say. Like, um, I'm going to sound like a potential again, but it all, start, you know, it all starts with like a first step. So just take the first step and do it. Don't get hung up on equipment, like, even if you make something just using a phone, you can still you can still make really cool. Like I've seen some really great shorts that have literally been shot on an iPhone and not even one of the new ones. Just it's more about the things you think of that you can do, even with just a phone, you can do some really cool camera angles and shots and that kind of thing. And also I'd say try and make something that's personal to you because um, it's just yeah, it's just really special when you make something that's about your experience or someone that you know's experience.